Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we'll be comparing these two high-end enclosed diode lasers. The first one here is the X-Tool S1 and the second one here is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. The first thing we'll cover is assembly and setup. Both machines arrived in very large boxes and they each weighed somewhere between 15 and 20 kilograms. The X-Tool was by far the easiest to set up and get running taking me around 20 minutes which also included the riser base add-on. The Falcon 2 Pro took at least 30 minutes to set up due to the required assembly of the protective screening and installation of the slats. Both kits provided sample materials and the setup manuals provided by both manufacturers were very comprehensive. Next up we'll talk about the build quality and design. Both machines have their own unique designs and have a decently large working area. The Falcon 2 Pro work area being 400 by 415 millimeters and the X-Tool S1 work area being 498 by 319 millimeters. Each of the machines has an advantage of around 100 millimeters on one another in different axes. So that may be a factor you'd want to consider depending on the type of work you want to do. In terms of machine footprint, the S1 is 190 millimeters wider than the Falcon 2 Pro, giving it a total width of 760 millimeters. In terms of structural build quality, they're both very sturdy machines and neither raise any cause for concern. It's worth noting that the Falcon 2 Pro has an all metal frame, meaning both internal and external. The S1 has an internal metal frame and a completely plastic exterior, making the Falcon 2 Pro just feel a little more solid. While the S1 does have a plastic exterior, the entire body is coated with a fire resistant agent UL94V0. In contrast, the enclosure lid of the S1 feels a lot sturdier than the sliding enclosure lid you get with the Falcon 2 Pro. I feel like the Falcon 2 Pro could benefit from a better enclosure lid design because sometimes it can stick and it can often make it feel a little bit cheap. Let's talk software. This is important and I don't think it should be overlooked. No matter how good your hardware and firmware is, if your software to use the machine isn't easy and intuitive, it can make or break the experience. First off, both machines are light burn compatible. If you've never seen or heard of light burn, it requires a purchasable license and as of right now that cost is 50 pounds. Both Creality and Xtool have comprehensive guides on how to set up each machine with light burn, but it's worth noting that neither machine requires light burn in order to operate. The Falcon 2 runs perfectly fine from laser gerbil and the X-Tool runs in X-Tool Creative Space. The biggest difference between the two machines here is that X-Tool have taken a massive leap forward in respect to software. They've launched their own software package called X-Tool Creative Space and it's free. I cover this in detail in my other video but it's exceptionally well developed and very intuitive and user friendly. Connectivity is also something worth mentioning here. The Falcon 2 Pro is limited to USB connectivity and requires two separate USB connections to your PC. One for the machine itself and another for the overhead camera. The S1 can communicate via a single USB connection or Wi-Fi, which can all be configured within Xtool Creative Space. Firmware updates is also something I thought worth mentioning. Looking at the websites, the last firmware release for the Falcon 2 Pro was January 2024. And updating requires you to flash the firmware manually by putting in an SD card. The Xtool S1 is up to date as of this week and the Creative Space software alerts you and offers to flash the new software right there and then in Xtool Creative Space. I found this to be a very smooth, hassle-free process. Now let's talk about the UI and controls for each machine. The Xtool S1 has just one front facing button. The only other button is the emergency stop which is located on the right hand side of the machine. The front facing button serves many functions and is also an LED indicator. You can think of it more as an action button. The Creative Space software takes care of almost everything and then it will alert you telling you to push the button to take an action. This does however really limit what you can do with it outside of the software. Without the software, the S1 can't really do anything. The S1 does support offline processing to some extent. If for example you start a job and the USB connection is lost, the processing will not be affected. There is a mobile app available which you can connect to via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but you still need some kind of software connection 
to initiate a job. The Falcon 2 Pro is very different. While you certainly can use Lightburn to control it and start jobs, it can also operate entirely offline. You can simply export your G-code from Lightburn, pop the SD card in and away it goes. To support this functionality, the Falcon 2 Pro has more controls on the front panel, including homing, jogging, framing, start-stop and emergency stop. The Falcon 2 Pro cannot be controlled via a mobile app due to its reliance on USB connectivity. I don't see either of these being deal breakers. Ultimately, you need a PC and some kind of design software to do anything meaningful with a laser anyway. So having a PC that can connect and communicate with the machines shouldn't be much of a problem for anyone. Another key difference between the two machines is how you translate the position of your workpiece from the physical world into the design software. Both machines use completely different approaches and which one you prefer will ultimately depend on your way of working and your personal preference. The Falcon 2 Pro uses an overhead camera system. This requires calibration and setup. Fortunately, the instructions provided by Creality are very thorough and easy to follow. The system works very well and if you use Lightburn you can get real-time camera view. This updates the Lightburn canvas with an image enabling you to line up your designs with the material with a minimal margin of error. The Xtool S1 uses a positional tracking system they've branded as Twin Point Positioning. When I tried this it was a complete breath of fresh air from using the camera based system. The S1 requires you to physically move the head of the laser around and mark out various points which are then captured by the Creative Space software. I found this to work exceptionally well. Now let's talk about safety. Both machines feature safety keys which must be inserted in order to operate the machine. The Falcon 2 Pro has a physical key whereas the S1 has a digital key in the form of a USB. This plugs into the back of the machine. Obviously both machines have the fully enclosed frame designs and they both have great extraction systems which prevent any leakage escaping into the workshop. The Falcon 2 Pro offers a bit more flexibility in terms of where you can have the extraction outlet. You can put it on the left or the right hand side of the machine. The S1 however has a fixed extraction vent at the back of the machine and it's worth noting that this requires an extra few inches of free space behind the machine to have the extraction tube installed. Neither machine came with particularly long extraction tubes so if you have a big shop and you want to vent the fumes out I'd recommend buying your own. I tested the fire safety system on both machines by starting real fires. I was pleased to see that both were able to successfully detect a fire and stop the job while generating audible alerts. The S1 was also able to alert me in the dedicated Xtool Creative Space software. If you purchase the S1 20 watt or 40 watt, you get the fire safety set for free. This detects flames and automatically sprays CO2 to put out the fire. This adds an additional layer of safety. Both machines also pause operation immediately whenever the enclosure lid is opened, eliminating the risk of any permanent eye damage. To summarize the safety here, both machines were clearly designed with safety as the number one priority. This is fantastic to see and is driving innovation and greater safety expectations for all newcomers to this diode laser market. When it comes to maintenance, let's first look at general cleaning. The S1 has a fully enclosed bottom section with a metal tray that is bolted down to the frame. If you have the riser base, this metal tray is bolted on from the underneath, meaning that it can't be easily removed. This can make it quite awkward to clean the inside of the S1 because you have to really get in there. The S1 also uses a honeycomb panel which can be easily removed but is also notoriously difficult to clean. The Falcon 2 Pro has a slatted workpiece surface design and a pullout tray underneath. The pullout tray is completely removable allowing you the freedom to clean it however you want. While the removal of each individual slat is time consuming, they can each be cleaned very easily. After spending a lot of time working with the machine, I found the Falcon 2 Pro much easier to clean than the S1. In terms of lens cleaning, this is very easy on both machines and it can be done in two minutes or less. This is ideal because it's important to keep the lens clear for consistent performance, but it's not something you want to spend a lot of time doing in between different jobs. The other thing I'll mention here which I'd consider to be maintenance is camera calibration. 
The Falcon 2 Pro requires camera calibration through Lightburn in order for you to position your designs on the workpieces accurately. One thing I experienced is that when you work with a range of thicker materials, you have to recalibrate the camera for maximum accuracy. This would also be a good time to discuss the manual focusing of the Falcon 2 Pro using the focus block. While this approach does work, it seems particularly dated and tedious in comparison to the X2S1 which has an auto focusing and twin point positioning system. This in my eyes makes the X2S1 more plug and play in comparison with the Falcon 2 Pro. When it comes to material compatibility, both machines are available with 40 watt modules, rendering them compatible with all the common materials you typically want to use with a laser. The only major difference worth noting here is that the S1 has a riser base upgrade which enables you to work with much thicker materials up to 133.5 mm height. The Falcon 2 Pro does also offer riser legs, but to use them the machine has to become no longer fully enclosed. I think these were originally intended for the Falcon 2 and not the Falcon 2 Pro. Additional accessories are available for both machines such as Air Assist, Smoke Purifier and the Rotary Tool. The X-Tool S1 has some additional accessories available such as the riser base and the auto conveyor feeder which lets you work with longer materials. One key difference to point out between these machines is the use of the rotary kit. The Falcon 2 Pro requires you to remove the bottom tray and place the entire machine up on individual risers. This is very difficult to do due to the weight of the machine and it leaves the bottom of the machine exposed to the open air. This seemed like a lot of hassle and to me it felt like the X2S1 was designed from the ground up with all these accessories in mind whereas with the Falcon 2 Pro it seemed to be more of an afterthought. With the S1 provided you have the riser base installed you can connect the rotary tool and have it running within minutes. Just to be clear they both engrave very well and you can certainly engrave on a variety of cylindrical materials with both machines. It's just the setup process that sets them apart. The final thing I'd like to talk about is performance and speed. As I mentioned earlier both machines are available with a 40 watt module so it's fair to say that they're certainly not short on power. It's also worth mentioning that each machine has lower wattage modules available which may be better suited to what you want to do. If all you want to do is cut thicker materials fast then the 40 watt is probably for you. If you primarily engrave images then you might get better results with the 10 or 20 watt modules and their slightly smaller spot beams. This applies to both machines and is a general rule of thumb with diode lasers. Speed is an area where these machines differ considerably. The Falcon 2 Pro has a working speed of 416 mm per second or 25,000 mm per minute, whereas the X-Tool S1 has an advertised working speed of 600 mm per second or 36,000 mm per minute. This is a considerable difference and is something I've definitely noticed as I've become more familiar with these machines over the past few months. The X-Tool S1 is capable of operating 44% faster than the Falcon 2 Pro and this could end up being a business decision for you depending on your business throughput. So there we have it. I hope you found that video informative and useful. Like I said at the start, I'm not here to definitively say one is better than the other. These are both fantastic machines and they'll certainly always have a place here in the workshop. I just wanted to share my experience in an open and honest way that will help you make a decision for your purchase. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have affiliate links for each of these down in the description below, as well as some coupon codes that will give you a discount. That way you can support the channel at no extra cost to you, and I'd really appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something, I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.